Hey guys, welcome to Spirit Pig. This is the show that explores how to live a fulfilled life. I'm Duncan CJ, and today I'm talking to Dr. Joe Gallenberger. Uh, Joe is a clinical psychologist with over 30 years experience as a therapist and has great interest in the universal principles of manifestation. He is a fascinated in uh, human potential and is the author of several books, including Liquid Luck, The Good Fortune Handbook, and Inner Vegas, which takes readers on a wild ride into the world of psychokinesis, or PK. Uh, Joe is a senior facilitator at the Monroe Institute and is a highly sought after international speaker on topics such, of, on topics such as out of body experiences, accelerated and remote healing, manifestation, and meditation. Thank you so much for being here, Joe. I'm really, really looking forward to this one. My pleasure, Joe Duncan. Uh, <laughs> looking forward to it too. I mean, yeah, this in, this, uh, this topic is one which, I mean, I'd heard a bit about um, uh, some of the results of it, but I'd never, ever heard this phrase before. Psychokinesis, kinesis, kinesis, uh, kinesis. or PK. Yeah. Th- I would absolutely love just to basically just to jump straight in and like, first of all, what on earth is psychokinesis? Well, it means the same thing as some people know it under telekinesis, and it's the ability of humans uh, to affect physical matter reality with their energy. Usually, people will say with their mind. The mind sets the intent, like driving the car, where that would be the steering wheel, but you need a lot of energy for the gas. Uh, and it results in things like bending metal or plastic with your mind, growing seeds in your hand in five minutes, you get root growth maybe an inch long, uh, lighting light bulbs with your energy, uh, rolling Dyson patterns, affecting slot machines, affecting computers, uh, many different things. And it also is the same energy we use for energy healing uh, and for manifesting what you'd like in your life. But under science, usually it's it's more the experiments with random number generators, uh, computers, uh, affecting experiments like that. Uh, One of the ones I did at Princeton was the height of a fountain bubbles by random hydrodynamic law. It keeps changing column height. And they said, keep it high for 15 minutes, make it low for 15, leave it alone, 15 for control. And uh, I got results way off the chart in terms of science uh, significance, uh, being able just with your mind to make that column low or high at your will. So that's the type of thing we do in psychokinesis. Because I mean, like... I guess my, when you hear stuff like that, I mean, my, my, my skeptical, I know, rational mind immediately is like, no, like, how? That's not possible, surely. But there's this, like you just, you just mentioned there, Princeton, you're mentioning these, this is like, this can, these studies are done in laboratories. You know, this is actually with the science backing them up, which is, which is crazy. Yeah. And you, you, can't, you can't argue the data, can you? No, the data pile now is... Uh two decades long and some of the meta-analysis where they take many studies, combine them together, is at a trillion to one by chance, that type of thing. So there's uh, reputable science behind it. There are some skeptics uh, that say it's not there, but uh, if you look at that, there's a lot of politics. There's a good book called Fall of the House of Skeptics, uh, Science and Psychic Phenomena by Chris Carter. He gets into the politics. Uh, one group I know personally who's, who are debunkers, uh, their charter says they will do no study themselves and they will look at no data, yet they proclaim it's all bunk. Uh, but when you get behind the politics, the uh, reasonable scientists say there's something here because the data shows it is. I heard a statistic, which I think, um, I, think I saw on your website or um, somewhere, where it was, you said something like 97% of, sci- of science and scientists are, are actually saying, hey, this is true. It's just that small, very loud minority in the media, in the government, which are saying, you know, which, so, so the majority of the, the public walking around uh, are thinking this is, this is nonsense. But actually, science, 97% of scientists are saying, actually, there is data and science backing this up. Yeah, they don't say this is true, but they say, 97% say, uh, they think this might be possible given the data. So a little, you know, scientists don't like to say anything <laughs> definitive, but uh, they open to the possibility. And um, Princeton Anomalous Research Laboratory online, uh, they've closed feeling they've proven this, but their data is there as well as some papers showing 
uh, how this might be possible within a quantum physics model. If you look at just Newtonian physics, uh, it doesn't look possible. But if you move into quantum theory and things, they can see how this might happen. In fact, some people say quantum theory dictates it will happen, uh, that it needs to be true. So uh, it's an interesting area. And uh, I uh, have been trained as a scientist, but rather than sit in laboratories all the time uh, repeating the experiments that they do, because that's very tedious and costs lots of money, I took all this information, went out to Las Vegas to see if I could get a PK in karate, uh, a black belt in karate, if you will. I'm sorry, black belt in PK or psychokinesis, if you will. Uh, so I used it for slot machines and uh, rolling dice. And we've done over 70 inner Vegas adventure workshops. Um, the last two we went to, everybody won every session. We can't guarantee that, but when it goes well, that's the kind of thing that happens. And we've had slot machine hits that... 200 million to one, and we're hit at 1.6 billion to one by chance. So uh, we have, that's our playground to explore this and give people feedback in just two or three days that this is possible and that they can do it. Uh, you know, people once in a while proclaimed, oh, you have to be really special or talented. I think this is a very normal ability that most people have. It's just been um, uh, suppressed or unlearned or discouraged. Uh, so, in fact, kids are better at the metal bending than adults usually. Well, because they don't have so much um, pre, like they don't have so much, uh, they're not so stuck in their ways. They're more, they're more open to ideas. Yes. And so, yes, the Chinese have done some work cultivating children, letting them know these things are possible. And they have very interesting results uh, filmed and all with things flying across the room, kids breaking sticks outside the the building, um, teleporting things, uh, having things disappear and reappear, all kinds of wild stuff. Um, in the U.S., we've dealt mainly with, uh, in the Cold War, using things we call remote viewing to be able to sense anything across time. Uh, the remote influencing, we've uh, kind of left alone, best I know, officially. Uh, but uh, uh, it's an interesting area. And I think very healthy to do this right, the best way I've found is to really raise a very high heart energy um, because that energy is positive psychologically and spiritually. And it's uh, one you can keep going and, and uh, control quite easily uh, to have good effect. So you could do psychokinesis saying, I'm so angry I could break glass and the windshield of your car breaks but we don't want to go around being destructive. So we use uh, the positive energies of open-heartedness and love to accomplish this and the energy healing and the manifesting. One, one thing I found really, really interesting was um, in, in life, you know, say you, you're trying to adopt like a positive mentality or you're trying to create change, you're trying to manifest stuff in your life. It's often a lot less clear, slower. It's, it's, it's harder to maybe see, um, you know, see that direct cause and effect but often yes. with this you get that immediate feedback so you're talking about bending spoons like uh, seeds growing in your hands light, mm -hmm. like lighting light bulbs often within five minutes you can actually you get immediate feedback you see how you're doing and then you can it's 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 much more instant so i i, yes, I, I, I like a that... lot of confidence absolutely and um when we get go out to vegas with the dice tables we get tables reserved just for ourselves and if you're connected to earth energy strongly, in touch with spirit, feeling one with everything, feeling great, full, open-hearted, loving, you usually get rewarded with, mo with money within seconds. Uh, and that repeats and repeats. If you go into greed, fear, ego, you get punished by withdrawal of the money. And um, so much, uh, it's like tra tra training a dog to sit with a treat. It's psychological conditioning. So after a two or three day workshop, you've been conditioned with very quick feedback that this does work, how to raise the energy, how to focus it, what gets in the way, you know, because ego can be kind of tricky, you know, you, uh, once you do it, once you go, okay, I got it, now I, I don't have to do all this preparation, I don't have to have my heart open, I'll just do it. And uh, the dice table show you, nope, you got to be pretty impeccable in each present moment for this to happen, which I think is true in life too. But in life, when you want a soulmate, uh, it might be months or a year, 
If you think negatively for six weeks before you get ill, you might not connect your thinking to the illness. Uh, so this connects things really strongly and makes you know, not just believe, that you do have effect on matter. I think what you were saying there about, um, it was interesting because I saw a quote which you wrote that was, uh, fear is truly a prayer for what you do not want. Um, yes. And you were describing this um, idea of um, a scale. Like, so you don't have to be perfect, but imagine a scale tipping. Say you're, like, say you're looking for a soulmate, for example. Mm -hmm. Say if you were 60% in fear or like thinking like, oh, no one likes me and you're only 40% thinking, oh, actually, I do deserve it, then it's not in your favor. So you don't have to be, you just got to tip the scale in your favor. Is that correct? Or Yes. So say you got 60% uh, clear intention, clear desire and 40% fear. It might come to you, but slowly with glitches. Um, if you got up to... 80% uh, desire, 20% fear, uh, probably will come much quicker with some hard work. Get up to 90% desire, 10% fear, that's when synchronicities, serendipities, things flow your way, uh, becomes much easier. We always say this is something better, uh, and if it's appropriate, you know, for me and the universe. So, um, and uh, so if it is something in line with what the universe would like for you, uh, then things can flow really smoothly if you get the fear way down. Yeah. Easier said than done, Duncan. <laughs> I bet, I bet. You know, especially on important things. You know, you get a diagnosis that you're waiting for the results of a medical test that might be um, a very severe thing for you. Uh, over that weekend, if you can get your fear way down, you might go in and they say, well, that thing under your arm last week is now just water. You know, but... Uh, you have to be able to learn. I wish they teach this in high school or you know before college. Uh, how to how to manage that fear? How to really have a clarity of intention? And there are great ways. We got a home study course called Sync Creation. We got workshops. Um, even the Liquid Lux CD and book combo. You know, I put out uh, the CD and within uh, a day it began to get people winning lotteries, uh, selling houses that have been on the market for months within uh, an hour, uh, folks finding soulmates, uh, folks finding four-leaf clover after looking 40 years, 70 years, I think, that lady. Uh, all kinds of interesting things, just because Liquid Luck focuses on raising beautiful heart energy, reducing fear, imagining this thing uh, that you would like clearly and then uh, it can come to you. So Liquid Luck Book and CD is probably the easiest way to get a taste of this working. Um, the metal bending, all that, workshops are great for it. The home study course is great for it. The psychokinesis part. Uh, and it can be a lot of fun, you know. I bet. And I, on, I heard this, um, uh, on, I think it was in um, Liquid Luck, you, you take people in this meditation where you, you make them, um, people, they describe they're almost a wizard or an alchemist, and then... Can you, could you describe exactly how, yes, how so that works? Yes, uh, so we're using uh, binaural beat technology, a type of brainwave pattern uh, technology that helps people go into very deep meditative states and relaxed states within five minutes. Uh, so that's in the background. The verbal guidance is to relax, open your heart, get rid of distractions, and then to imagine yourself as a, a wizard or alchemist in your uh, beautiful laboratory, uh, feeling really comfortable and then to in front of you have a glass vial that you fill with energy and you'd start with the energy of happiness believe it or not because it's uh, hard to be wanting to be here on earth if you're not happy uh, so we'd fill with happiness uh, fill with gratitude feelings of abundance then we bring in compassion so that reduces ego and brings it to everybody's benefit we bring in love praise which is a very high energy. I think everything in the universe at one level is praising life. Uh, and finally, we bring in the feeling of good fortune, which, believe it or not, is not um, that well rated. You know, if somebody says, oh, you're just lucky, that can be an insult. We believe in the United States, particularly hard work, merit, you know, gets you where you want to go. So we wash that away and we realize it's good to be lucky. So you put all that in your vial, and then anytime you want to have a lucky day filled with ser serendipity, synchronicity, everything going your way, you just imagine taking a drink 
from that energy vial. And that's what's been triggering these uh, lotto wins. And, new, you know, one lady was out of work for six months. She got four job interviews in one week. It can turn around a negative pattern by having that vivid imagination of, for a while, let's forget the fear. For a while, let's just pretend we're a very powerful wizard or alchemist. And, you know, we have control and influence. And those images work pretty well. We have another one called Abundance Waterfall, where you imagine all the abundance in your life now, the beauty of the pets in your life, friends, health, beauty of nature, all flowing around you like a waterfall. And you sit in that waterfall feeling all that abundance. When I've done that, I've pressed the slot machine immediately on first pull, one royal flush. That's uh, 160,000 to one, pays five grand or so, which is fun. And went to the next machine, on the third pole won the jackpot, on the fifth pole won the same jackpot. So when you get in this feeling of great abundance, it's very powerful. Uh, so we have a lot of fun. <laughs> I want to come to I want to come to Vegas with you. <laughs> That'd be fine. We're full with wait lists for the next few groups, but uh, I'm not surprised. I think in February we'll have one that should be uh, opening soon. I'm, I love that because it's just so it, when you when you just you get rid of all the limiting beliefs or the self sabotaging and you just have that pure belief and intention just anything yeah it just it just opens the doors of what actually is possible yes um, and, and we have to be compassionate that's not easy to do when you've been physically ill or out of work or you know in a mm. relationship that's very stru strife ridden or a job that you know makes you feel downtrodden you got to you got to, you know, the movie The Secret would talk about visualizing, but you have to work on this energy. That's what I found is key. But there are technologies and ways to, to really help that heal that. Yeah. And then, then the sky's the limit. I just, it made me think, when you were saying that, um, when I was um, reading something earlier, I don't know if this is connected or this is just a completely random point, but um, when I was uh, like 15 or 16, um, every single year, um, not every single year, every single week, um, a friend of mine, um, Luke Lancaster and I, uh, after walking back from chemistry class, we used to always play rock, paper, scissor, like the game. Yes. And uh -huh. every single, it was every single Wednesday at about one o'clock, and every single Wednesday for maybe a year, a year and a half, I beat him every single time. As in, it was just, and, and, and it, was, it was fluke, it was Larkas supposedly. But I knew, as in, I just knew, 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 like, as in I couldn't be beaten, as in I was, it was the craziest thing. But I beat him every single week for like a year mm -hmm. and a half. And then, because I just knew I couldn't be beaten. And then I think like once, like, I don't know, I wasn't really concentrating. He beat me and then he would beat me. Like, then it would be like, he would win, I'd win. But it was just that I just knew, knew, knew that I would win every time. And well, that's pretty amazing. If you looked uh, at Rock Scissors paper, basically as a 50-50 coin flip, one or the other will be right. Yeah. <clears throat> you should win 50% of the time. So that was equivalent if it was 70 weeks in a row of flipping heads 70 times in a row which would be uh, to the quadrillions to one. So something at least psychic is going on uh, between you both. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, I imagine you weirded them out a little bit. I mean, it, it was, I mean, like, yeah, after about six months, we'd then have like other people like walking, like, it would always be from walking from chemistry back to lunch. It's about a 10, 15 minute walk. And yeah, it was, it was, it was creepy how I would like, I couldn't lose. I just and I knew I didn't I had no I had no fear I had no no stress about any game because I knew that I'd always win and then suddenly well, you once... see he also by then would have I can never win exactly so you both are uh, hitting it from the opposite sides creating a strong uh, event <laughs> you know of great creating reality a certain way because uh, uh, you know and that that's what we see you know some uh, it's sometimes uh, you know in energy healing. You don't know if you did it or he did it or whether it's supposed to happen anyway. One of the things I like about the metal bending, it would never bend that way without something weird happening. Uh, I like the statistic things like on dice, if we roll nine nines in a row, we can say, okay, statistically that would not happen once in a thousand times or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And so the scientist part of me likes to be able to study it and make it uh, kind of pure. But in fact, the uh, remote viewing or uh, telepathic kind of things come in very strongly with the psychokinesis. So there'll be this combination 
of using your quote intuition to know what slot machine to sit next to or what table to go to or when to play or when to bend the spoon when you're feeling ready and then the energy flows and you're able to do it. So it's a timing as well as energy thing. That's crazy. Uh, so, so we use uh, basically intuition plus PK together almost all of the time. You, you, you mentioned it just then, um, but you, you, like under, if you look at the metal, uh, which is the metal which is bent um, under um, uh, psychokinesis, um, it looks different, doesn't it? Then if, if, you, if you heated yes. the metal or if it was bent by force, the actual under a microscope, the, the particles look yes, different? Yes, there's uh, two British uh, physicists uh, did a book called The Metal Benders. And uh, they uh, said when they look at it under electron microscope, it looks different. Uh, than if it was bent by force. Um, we use metal that uh, would be strong enough that a very strong man putting as much force as he wants on it would not be able to bend it uh, in our you know best examples. And then we see it bent and I've showed it to metallurgists and they say that's impossible. Either you have to heat it to 10,000 degrees or, or, and then there would be marks from the heating. Uh, but um, it's kind of a nice proof when you get that going. It's uh, amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm desperate to try it. Um, and then can you basically describe, um, I think it's slightly, it's connected um, in a way um, about the study of, um, of nuns over six decades because that, I just found that absolutely fascinating. <clears throat> this was in the Liquid Luck book about happiness and how important it is. What they did was they had the nuns uh, write an essay at the time when they were joining the nunnery or the convent. <clears throat> and then they followed these nuns for 60 years. And so they had very similar diets, beliefs, physical lifestyle, all of those things were controlled. And they found that, that at the end of that, I can't remember the exact numbers, but it was roughly 80% of nuns who wrote happy essays were alive at 90 years old and only like 10 percent or so who wrote unhappy uh, essays and the amount of health problems and all of that the, the happy group did much much better in life than the unhappy group just measured by that one essay and in fact then they followed up with an experiment where they took the graduation pictures from high school of people and if it was a genuine smile versus a fake smile the genuine smile group had a much better life for the next 30 years. So happiness is very important. We have a range we're born with. Some people are naturally ebullient and happier, but we can learn to live at the top of our range by doing things like being grateful, uh, compassionate, praising, uh, looking at the good things. In Liquid Luck uh, book, there's a lot of exercises to just increase your happiness uh, level because it's a very powerful place to start. If you're not happy, you're not going to be in your power. You're not going to be in the now. You're going to be worried about the future or, or worried about the past. And you got to be right here, right now, and be happy to be here for it to work the best. <laughs> I mentioned in your uh, introduction that you are a senior facilitator at the Monroe Inst Institute. Yes. Um, could you maybe just uh, let our audience, like anyone who doesn't know who's from like, you know, the UK or from around the world, who doesn't, you know, who's not familiar with it, what, what yeah. is the Monroe Institute and what kind of technologies are kind of being uh, developed there? Monroe Institute uh, was developed, uh, founded by Bob Monroe. He uh, was a businessman, but he found he was trying to do sleep learning and he found that state right between sleep and awake was also good for out-of-body experience. He found himself being able to uh, take his consciousness out of body. And then he wanted to study it. He wanted to put 5,000 people through to have a subject base. He developed the Monroe Institute when he found he could induce these kinds of altered states of consciousness in other people. But what's the main thing that's unusual about it? They've been studying now brainwave technologies through sound for 40, 50 years. They've had 40 or 50,000 people go through their programs 20 at a time. And they have no dogma. You don't have to wear an orange robe. You don't have to believe any particular thing. But you can go and explore these issues of consciousness and spirit and how uh, spirit affects matter, all those things. So they have a, more than a dozen different programs. They are located in Virginia, but they have places all around the world, including the UK and many places in Europe when you can, where you can go. So if you went to monroeinstitute.org, you'd see 
a lot about what they offer. Uh, I think it's uh, one of the most special places on the planet. Because of that idea, you don't have to believe anything particular, and they have technology to help you explore your own consciousness. I mean, well, one of them that jumped out was this, yeah, um, Hemi Sync. Uh, Sync, yes. is, yeah. Which then, because even, even if you've been doing, I know, it, it, it takes you into this super just deep, through sound, this deep consciousness level. So even if you've been meditating for years and years, you could actually almost make this whole process. You can get into a deep like state in five minutes or so. Is that right? Yes, it, um, it can be very, very rapid. Um, I've worked with shamans, with Buddhist monks, with fundamental Christians, all different beliefs. And um, they all find that this tends to really um, enhance whatever their program is to get into altered states, the contemplative states, deep meditation states. And uh, it's a simple um, thing. It stimulates the brain uh, into a state of both hemispheres working together very well and then changes the brainwave pattern depending on what you want to do. So if you wanted to deeply relax, this would help you do that. If you wanted to have a state to be highly creative, it could help you do that. Um, and it's measurable neuropsychologically, neurophysiologically. So um, it's, a, it's a great uh, tool that can be used for sports, uh, for helping people with pain, for the kinds of things we're talking about today, many, many uses. Um, and usually, you know, like my, I think my, you know, Liquid Lux CD has binaural beat in it, Abundance Waterfall, they're under 20 bucks, so it's a cheap way to get going. Um, Monroe Institute also has 250 uh, uh, different hemisync exercises available. So whether you took a weekend workshop, a week-long intensive, or even just a CD and slapped it on or a download, you should feel effects within, um, you know, 15 minutes. You, you probably say, wow, I haven't relaxed this much in a long time. So the kinds of things we're talking about, most of it is now available in digital download because uh, CDs, some people feel, are on their way out. So. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I like both, so my website offers both. Oh, amazing. Because, frankly, to the UK, you know, shipping can be difficult, that kind of thing. But, uh, <laughs> You mentioned and so people if they want to get into this, they can you know. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the link under this interview for sure. Yeah, um, sure. You, you mentioned um, like some of the stories earlier, but I, you you receive countless stories from people, you know, you know, telling you like, oh my god, like this happened once I did this, this happened. What what would you say? What's been one of your favorites or um, favorite stories that you've received? I really love the area of healing. I was working in a workshop with a, I think she was a 95-year-old lady up in Canada, and we had her in a circle. We were sending energy for anything she'd like with healing. And she said, oh, I don't need it. And we tell, yeah, yeah, what do you want? She said, well, I can't hear very well anymore. And why we sent energy in the 10 minutes she burst into tears, she could hear the birds outside the closed windows and um, was just so happy to be able to hear again. Um, those kind of stories I really like a lot. And I like to hear when somebody has been struggling and um, hasn't uh, been able to get work or something like that. And all of a sudden, one fella was out of work for a good while and um, he got the home study course, Sync Creation, and uh, he got a job offer at, at four or five times pay, more pay than ever before and repairing micro surgical equipment, very tiny machines. And he used PK to bend the metal in the machines and fix them. And within three months, he was, uh, I think, head of the southeast division of the company. Um, they, he, he really advanced really quickly. So we get some kicks like that. Oh, that's incredible. That's crazy. Yeah. What, what does a fulfilled life mean to you? Uh, I start with uh, soulmate and wonderful deep friendships, which I'm blessed to have. Uh, and being able to enjoy the beauty of nature. I live in a beautiful place. And, and uh, also, to me, we're miracle workers designed to have energy in unlimited quantity from source. I really like teaching this, um, that we can affect uh, the world and create a miracle, change things around for the better, make it heaven here on earth for us and for our kids and our grandkids. Um, so I get a lot of fulfillment out of 
uh, letting people know what is possible, helping them, coaching them to see how to begin to uh, experiment with that and seeing results. Uh, uh, that really floats my boat when I do hear those stories, you know, when I get up in the morning. Amazing. And what is one thing our listeners can do today that will have a massive positive effect on their lives? Well, I uh, developed a saying, and now it's on a board that is in my office right here on the wall I could look at right now, that says, fear is expensive, love is priceless, choose wisely. And if you lived every day from that, I think it would be transformative around the globe as well as for yourself personally. So just remember that fear is expensive and love is priceless, choose wisely. Amazing. And are there any books or resources which have changed or had a big impact on you? I would um, say the Monroe Institute was uh, a huge trigger for me. If a person had any way to get there or access their programs, they are even starting their premier program, Gateway Online, this week. Um, I would encourage that. And uh, for the first 20 years when I'd go up to Monroe asking people what was the most pivotal books they read in consciousness, they would mention the Seth books, S-E-T-H. Uh, they're older. And so the reading's kind of slow, but boy, are they filled with wisdom, in my opinion. So the Seth books would be up there on my top 10 books to take uh, to the desert island. <laughs> Amazing. And finally, how can people stay in touch, find out more about you and your work? Um, website's great. Um, one of the easiest is innervegas.com, uh, syncreation, S-Y-N-C-C-R-E-A-T-I-O-N.com. If you go to the website, under previous articles, there's a lot of articles with tips on how to do psychokinesis, how to do manifestation, healing, uh, as well as workshop schedules and products and things like that. So I think people would find a lot of information there of use. Uh, they can get there by just Googling Liquid Luck from that, liquidluckbook.com. Uh, many ways, uh, if you can remember Liquid Luck or Inner Vegas, you'll get there. Uh. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I've, yeah, welcome, this has been yeah, so, so, so fascinating. I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm going to be bending spoons before long. So <laughs> sounds good. You show me on air when you do it. Fantastic. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Really, really appreciate it. My pleasure. And uh, thank your audience as well. Talk soon. Bye. 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 